what the hell, Jack? Who's the kid? And why did you suddenly ask me to babysit him? You can't just leave someone else's kid here without explaining anything and then take off. Calm down, Sophie. His name is Terry. He's my co-worker's son. Yeah? And why is he here and not with your co-worker? Her name is Sandra, and she's a single mom. She can't watch him on weekends because she has to work. So I told her you'd help out. I'd love to help out, but I've got work to do. You need to tell me these things in advance. I can't just drop everything to look after someone else's child. Your work is just sitting at home playing around on your laptop. I'm sure you'll be fine looking after one kid. It won't be a big deal. I'm not just playing around on my laptop. I actually have deadlines to meet. I can't look after him. It'll be fine, trust me. He's still in third grade, so he'll be no trouble. Give him some candy, put him in front of the TV, and everything will be fine. What's fine about this situation? You said he's your co-worker's son, right? She doesn't think it's weird to leave her kid with a total stranger? What if something happened to him? I'm going to have to watch him the whole time he's here. I can't just leave him to do what he likes. Just let him play by himself. You're making this way bigger than it needs to be. Don't worry so much. Treat it as a test run for when we have our own kids in the future. I don't feel good about this, but if the kid has nowhere else to go, I won't abandon him. I'll look after him. What time will his mom come and get him? She'll pick him up around the same time I get back, probably around 9 p.m. What? He's staying here that long? There was no other option. She had to work. I know being a single mother is hard, but can't she ask someone else to take care of him? Taking care of someone else's child until 9 p.m. is too much pressure. This means I have to make him dinner, right? She asked us because she doesn't have anyone else to rely on. Don't ask him about his home situation or his private life. Seems like they've got some issues going on at home. Of course, I wouldn't dream of asking him any of that. But you do realize that I've never spent much time with kids before, right? I'm not feeling too confident about this. Do anything you set your mind to, Sophie. You're a great mentor in college, and you're a great cook. He'll love you the minute he meets you. How could he not? You're my wife, and you're brilliant. <laughs> That's it? That's all you've got to say to convince me? Good thing you weren't a lawyer. <laughs> You'd never win a case. Look, I'm sorry for dropping this on you, okay? But if you don't help us out, we won't be able to run the store. We asked other branches for help, but you know how it is in the service industry. There's a huge labor shortage. Yeah, I get that. But I can't take on such a big responsibility at such short notice. You just came home, dropped off this kid, and then left? Of course I'm going to be surprised. I know, and I'm sorry about that. Next time, I'll tell you in advance. Yeah, you do that. I'll take care of Terry, so don't worry about him. I hope you have a good day at work today. Thanks. Take good care of him for me. Hey, Sophie. I'm so sorry, but it looks like one of the part-time staff didn't show up, so I won't be home for a while. I only just got to take a break now. What time will you be home then? Probably sometime past 8 p.m. I think Sandra will be around to pick Terry up sometime around 8 p.m. too. What? They're making Sandra stay late too? So should I just go ahead and make dinner for Terry then? Yes, please. That'd be great. I'm so sorry. I know I promised to be back by early evening. Yeah, you did. You're lucky I don't mind because he's so mature for his age. Plus the fact that he's so adorable. Look at the two of you. You're already getting along great. It seems like Terry's really warmed up to you. I'm glad. And you were so reluctant to babysit him at first. It's not that I was reluctant. It's more the fact that you would be shocked if you were suddenly handed a kid and asked to look after them, don't you think? But anyway, none of that matters now. So I'm taking this to mean that you have no issues with taking care of him in the future, yeah? That's not what I said at all. I've had to look after him, what, four times this month already? I don't mind looking after him every now and again. Don't you think it's time that Sandra actually started thinking about what's best for Terry? It's hard being a single mother. We all need to help out a little. 
I know that already. But I don't think it's fair to just expect someone to look after your kid for your every time you're busy. She's not expecting anything. So how would you explain her attitude towards me then? I'm not doing this to make Sandra feel like she owes me something, but I've never heard her thank me, not even once. What's worse is that when she brings Terry over, she always brushes me off. She's just awkward. That's how she is. Yeah, but I'm looking after her kid for her. The least she could do is say hi or something. Even better, she could take Terry to some kind of after-school facility or ask for earlier shifts. There are so many things she could have done to try and make this situation better. Aren't you the store manager? Can't you try a bit harder to be more flexible with her? That's far outside what I'm allowed to do. As a manager, I can't just give preferential treatment to one person. That might be true, but surely you can reduce the number of late shifts. She has to work, can't you? I'm sure your other staff members will understand why, especially considering she's a single mother. Personally, I think that's a better way for you to help her. Sure, that sounds reasonable, but I won't be able to change her shifts for a little while. So would you mind looking after Terry for just a little longer? Of course I don't mind. But I'm sure that Terry would prefer some spending time with his mom to being stuck at our house all the time. So please, if you can try and make her work schedule a bit more accommodating. I guess you're right. Also, I know you're very busy, but I'd really love it for you to could come home a bit earlier. We haven't really been able to eat dinner together much lately, and I started feeling a bit lonely. I'm sorry. When the new employees start, I'll be able to come home earlier more often. Okay. I'm sorry too. I know how hard you've been working trying to figure all of this out. You've even gone so far as to help out with your co-worker's son. Well, to be fair, I'm the one looking after him. But you know what I mean. What I'm trying to say is that I thought it was very kind of you to do that. I don't know. I'm just doing what anyone would do if they were in my position. Not just anyone would be able to do what you've been doing. Plus, I'm sure Sandra's super happy about having all the extra help too. You're a real hero for working moms. Thanks for believing in me, even after I caused all these problems for you. You've definitely caused a few problems, but I'm your wife. So anytime you need me, I'll be there to help. I'm so glad I asked you to be my wife. I truly am a lucky guy. Yes, you are. <laughs> and you'd better remember that. Sophie? Terry, isn't it way past your bedtime? If you don't get to bed soon, won't your mom be mad? I need your help. Why? What's the matter? I'm cold. Why are you cold? Can I go to your house? I got kicked out by mom and your friend. What? What are you talking about? Who's my friend? It's that man you live with, I think. When you said your friend did, you mean Jack? Yeah. You said they kicked you out of the house. I'm sorry, hold on a second. What's wrong? I'm just finding it hard to believe. I'm sorry, did you say that Jack and your mom kicked you out of the house? I didn't read that wrong, did I? Yeah, they kicked me out. Oh, okay, I see. Don't worry about it. If it's too much trouble, I have a secret hideout. Oh, right. I I'm so sorry. Terry, of course it's okay. You can come and hang out here. Can I really? Thank goodness. Wait, it's late, so I I'll come and pick you up, okay? Just wait right there. Where are you right now? I'm not that far away. I was playing in the park near your house. Got it. I'm heading over there right now, okay? It's already dark out. You must be terrified. I'm leaving right now, so I'll be there as soon as I can, okay? It's okay. I'm used to being out by myself after dark. I'm sorry, what? Your friend comes around sometimes and then I have to leave. So, I'm used to walking around outside at night. But tonight, it's really cold outside and I don't think I can stay out here for much longer. I'm sorry if I'm being annoying. Don't say that. None of this is happening because it's your fault. When we get home, I'll make us some warm cocoa. How does that sound? You don't need to worry about a thing. You're safe now, okay? Okay. Sophie, where are you now? You're not at home, are you? Did you just get back home now? 
Sorry, I went out drinking with a friend last night and ended up staying over. We were talking all night, and before I knew it, it was morning. Oh, really? That's nice. Oh, right. Do you know where Terry is, by any chance? It seems like he suddenly left home late last night, and apparently his phone isn't charged either. He might turn up at our house, so it would be a massive help if you could stay at home and wait for him. I would do it, but I have to go to work. I'm not coming home. Excuse me? Terry's not going back to his mom's house either. Wait, you mean Terry's with you? What the hell? Terry stayed at our house last night. He told me that you and Sandra kicked him out of the house. Wait, what? He said it was cold outside and he wanted to go inside. After that, we had a nice little chat at home. You slept at Sandra's house, didn't you? What's worse? It was just the two of you. No, wait! You've got this all wrong. That absolutely didn't happen. Terry probably just made a mistake. He's too young to really understand reality. Surely you're not going to believe the words of a little kid over your husband. At that age, kids don't know the difference between their imagination and reality. Terry said that you've been over to his house more than once. Was that a mistake, too? Or maybe it was all just a lie he made up on the spot. I don't even have the time to cheat. You know how busy I've been, right? Not that it matters, because I would never do that. All I know is that you were good at making it seem like you were busy. But it's not like I took the time to keep a note of everything you were up to, so it wouldn't be totally impossible for you to find a way to cheat. So you're really not going to trust me? You do realize that I'm working my ass off for you, right? I did trust you, but now I've realized I was wrong. I was so naive. Don't say that. You weren't wrong. You're wrong right now if you think I'm cheating. There has definitely been some kind of mistake here. I mean, it's not like you have any proof of anything, is it? You're just listening to what someone else told you. To what a kid told you. If you trust me, even just a little bit, I want you to believe me when I say that I didn't cheat on you. Do you really think I came this far without proof? What do you mean? What kind of proof could you have? Stop trying to threaten me. Well, for starters, I have a photo of you and Sandra in bed together. If you consider that proof enough, I asked Terry to let us into his house early in the morning before the two of you woke up. I really wanted to wake you up myself and give both of you a piece of my mind right there and then. But Terry was with me, and I couldn't do that to him, so I just took a photo as evidence and left. You came inside? We only went in because Terry needed some clothes and his backpack for school. Oh, right. You don't need to worry about Terry anymore because he's with his dad. He'll probably be in contact with Sandra sooner or later. You guys went to his dad's house? Earlier. Do you remember? You told me that Terry had a few issues going on at home. That was all a lie, right? Terry was never the issue, was he? It was Sandra. What are you talking about? Apparently Sandra got divorced because she decided to cheat on her ex-husband. Even worse, though, is the fact that she cheated not just once, but twice. But despite all that, her ex-husband told me that she was the one who got custody. That's not true. Sandra told me that she left him because he was abusive towards her. Well, it looks like you've been lied to then, doesn't it? But you must have realized that something wasn't right. What kind of mother kicks her own child out of the house in the middle of the night? Well, I guess to be fair, you're also a liar and a cheat, so it must not have seemed all that odd to you. I didn't know. She told me there was a place nearby he could go where they would look after him. If that were true, she wouldn't have needed me to look after him from the start then, would she? Can we just meet up to talk about all this? I want to apologize and make it all up to you. I promise I'll do anything. But please don't say you want a divorce. We were made for each other. I knew you were the one from the start. Made for each other? <laughs> How tacky. Even if I did decide to meet up to talk things over, I wouldn't even know what to say to you. Sophie, please. I need you to forgive me. Why the hell should I forgive you? You do realize you made me look after the child of the woman you cheated on with me, right? 
What do you think I am? I had to leave him with you because we had to work. I had no choice. Besides, that had nothing to do with the affair. You're really going to try and tell me that you had nothing to do with your affair? All those times you asked me to look after Terry, you were at her house, weren't you? I already know that the only reason you made me look after Terry was so that the two of you could enjoy a few days off without him getting in the way. What kind of insane excuse is I'm only doing this to help out a single mother? It was all so you two could get in each other's pants. I'm sorry. If you're going to end up apologizing for it anyway, don't cheat from the start. And don't use a kid to cover your own hide. You don't need to worry though. I'll make sure that both of you take full responsibility for your actions. What do you mean by full responsibility? Are you saying you're leaving me? Oh, I'm doing more than that. I'll be suing you both for what you've done and getting in contact with your company to tell them all about your little affair. After that, I'll be testifying against Sandra to make sure that she's stripped of her parental rights and Terry can go and live with his dad. It seems like Terry had wanted to live with his dad the whole time. I don't give a damn about your plans for Sandra, but surely you don't need to tell my job about this. Isn't that going a bit too far? Are you serious? You had an affair with your coworker? Yeah, but that's a separate issue. It's got nothing to do with my job, and it's not worth contacting anyone at my job about. It's not up to you to decide whether it's worth it or not. Can you just calm down and think about this for a second? And how exactly am I supposed to be calm after finding out that my husband's been having an affair? Do you know how I've been feeling since I found out about your affair yesterday? Terry was with me the whole day, so I couldn't cry even about it. I couldn't even shout or be mad about it either. All the effort I've put into this relationship has crumbled away in the blink of an eye. I truly regret the fact that I hurt you. I can't tell you how sorry I am for going behind your back and betraying your trust. But I promise you, I want nothing to do with Sandra, and I'll cut all contact with her starting now. So can we just put this whole thing behind us? Are you stupid? Why would I ever forgive you after what you've done to me and Terry? Sophie, you're not thinking straight right now. I don't think you should be deciding anything while you're in this state of mind. Oh, really? What about you then? Were you thinking straight when you made me look after your fair partner's kid? Personally, I don't feel like that's something any fully functioning person would make their wife do. Do you? Well, you might have a point, but I didn't mean for this to happen. You know what? I think you're right. I'm about to lose my cool, but even so, I'm a better judge of what's right and wrong than you. And I know for sure that I don't ever want to see you again. Sophie, I'm begging you. Please reconsider what you're saying. What am I supposed to do if I lose my job? I finally managed to make my way up to the store manager. All of my hard work would have been for nothing. Don't get me wrong. None of this is my fault. We had something good and you destroyed it all. Wasn't it you who created this whole mess because you wanted to help Sandra out? Then see it through to the end and deal with the consequences. I can't help you anymore. Sophie, I'm sorry. Hey, Terry. What's the matter? Sorry for texting you, even though my dad told me not to bother you anymore. Oh, right. He told me mom wasn't very nice to you. So, you'd be sad if I messaged you. How could I be sad? We're friends, aren't we? You can message me anytime you want. But thanks for worrying about me, Terry. You don't hate me? Of course not. Thank goodness. I miss the soup you used to make me. Can I come and visit you? Sure. Oh, but make sure you ask your dad first, okay? I will. Hey, Sophie. Yeah? Thanks for always being so nice to me. My life was more fun after I started going to your house. I didn't feel so lonely anymore. Me too. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you. Also, thanks for helping me find a way to live with my dad again. My dad said that everything turned out well because he helped us. Are you a superhero? My dad says you're a hero. 
Oh no, I've been found out. <laughs> I guess I don't have to keep hiding my cape anymore. I knew it. That's so cool. I got to become friends with a hero. That's why you were with me every time I felt sad or lonely, wasn't it? Do you still feel lonely? No. I've got you and dad now, so I don't feel lonely anymore. But I am sad because I can visit you anymore. Oh, right now our houses are a bit further away than they were before. Are you okay? You're not lonely? What do you mean? The last time I saw you before I left, your face looked really sad. Whenever I'm feeling sad, just remember I'm with you. So you don't have to feel so sad anymore, okay? Next time, I'll be the one helping you. That's what friends do. Thank you. Hearing your kind words have made my day. Really? Do you think I can become a hero too? You can become anything you want to. Next time you come and visit, let's eat tons of soup and play loads of video games together, okay? I'll be waiting. Deal? Okay. Deal. After that, I told my husband's workplace about his affair, and he was fired completely. I threatened to go public with the information if they didn't, saying they hire adulterers. They didn't want the bad press since I had proof of his affair. Our divorce went forward without a hitch, and I was even able to get damages from both my ex-husband and Sandra. Sandra had nowhere to go after she was fired too. She couldn't afford rent and especially couldn't pay the money I sued her for. So she was forced to take out a loan to pay the damages she owed me. With nowhere left to go, she started offering her services to men to help pay off the loan she took out. Although they had apparently broken up after the whole affair, Sandra blamed everything on my ex-husband. Now, I heard that she visits the store whenever she has time to make sure he knows how much she hates him. I'm no longer involved in the situation, so I couldn't care less if they decided to stay together in the end. To be completely honest, I was so heartbroken by the whole affair that I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to recover from it. I thought I would go mad from all the suffering they put me through. At times, I even felt angry at Terry, even though none of this was his fault. But after seeing how Terry felt and seeing how happy he looked after it was over, I somehow managed to pull myself together. The only reason I didn't lose it when I found out about the affair was that Terry was with me. I want to be someone that he feels he can rely on. I don't want Terry, who saw only the worst of the adults around him, to lose his childish innocence. It's been difficult, but I know I can get past this. And it's all thanks to the kind and adorable little hero who stuck by my side throughout it all.